G'day, fellas, and welcome to the very first... Ooh, the black screen. Welcome to the very first game in your series against the Muslim, representing Team Liquid, and the Viper, representing GL. Spawning in over on the right-hand side of the map, playing in the color blue. As the French, we've got the one, the only, the Viper. And on the left, it is going to be his big, big, big rival, the Muslim, representing Team Liquid now, two players that both have some big esports organizations backing them, which is not something that's super common in the AOE4 scene. So there is also a little extra aspect to this one. GL, one of the most prestigious uh, teams in the entire Age Vampire scene, not just Age Vampires 4, whereas for Team Liquid, I don't think I have to say a lot of things about them. If you haven't heard about Team Liquid, you probably should come out of the cave that you've been living in for the last 20 years. <laughs> and how do you have electricity in that cave anyway? Uh, but <laughs> this, this, this is an in incredible matchup, an exciting matchup. This is something that we saw yesterday out of, um, out of the players who played then. Uh, so we've got Viper on the French, De Muslim on the Delhi. Let's talk a little bit about this matchup and about what we expect to see today, because both of these players, they're going to be feeling comfortable with this matchup. Are we going to be seeing anything crazy today, Lidicor? Possibly. We talked about this one in the pregame show, that neither of these players use these civilizations very commonly in the previous rounds of Golden League. So there is definitely some surprise factor in both, especially with the Muslim. He only played two games with the Delhi throughout the entire tournament. He actually won both of those. But Viper also played a minimal amount of games with the French, which is probably a little more surprising because French was one of the most commonly picked civilizations throughout the previous stages, partly because, of course, we did have some civilization restrictions in some rounds, making Delhi much less accessible than other civs. Yeah, but I think it's, it's de Delhi's definitely come down a little bit from its high horse. I remember back in the day, you know, Delhi used to be considered the go-to pick for all players, but now it seems to, you know, not be that hotly contested pick that we see anymore. It seems to be French, uh, a civilization that people are always happy to pull out on, on a, a lot of different maps. Uh, Mongols, another one, but I definitely feel like these three civs all seem to be pretty much top of the table at the moment. Yeah, that's exactly it. And the thing that makes French such a valuable civilization is that it is good for every single map. Talk about Boulder Bay with the Hawks. Talk about an open map like Arabia with their Knights. Talk about the slow map like Altai or Hillendale with their ability to build villagers fast on the town centers. They have a meaningful bonus for every single map that you could uh, possibly select in Age of Empires 4 right now. And that makes them really viable because it's your plug and play civilization. And that is part of the reason why it's so popular among the players. Yeah, yeah, really good point. We start to see these age ups coming through now. Viper going with the School of Cavalry. Over on the other side, we've got the Dome of the Faith coming down. So no no Tower of Victory coming out today, but a little bit of scout harassment over on the gold. Just being pesky and annoying. This is something that really uh, can annoy you in the early game. And at the same time, it sort of forces your opponent to respond here uh, because typically you're going to want to keep these two villages on gold as the Delhi throughout the, the entire early game. So either the Muslim is going to have to make a choice. Do I come back here and bring a scout back and take this or do I just let it go? And you can see how much that's impacting already the, the gold gathering with that villager taking the long way around the gold mine. Yeah, that's exactly it. Small little things add up. And obviously that gold is important for the Muslim because that's going to impact his ability to produce scholars. And you see, he's actually going to pull his scholar out here to heal that villager. And while you might say, hey, that's pretty cool. That scout didn't do any damage. But wait a second. That scholar right now is idle. It's not buffing your research. It's not doing anything. So this is already something that's impacting the Muslim's early game here a tiny bit. And it's a little tricky for the Muslim because he only went for a one scout build. You can see that at the top of the screen. So... Even if he pulls back one scout over here, Viper has a second scout that he could pull to continue this fight. And obviously, if you damage those villagers, it's going to be much easier for your knights to pick them off, even without the blacksmith, given that the Muslim isn't going to have uh, the textiles upgrade immediately. The Muslim now reaching the feudal age. Now, one of the things to note is the Muslim did go for a late mosque which means that Piety isn't going to be researched yet. He's got efficient production in, and he's getting Sanctity now, but Piety is not researched as far as I'm aware. Uh, we can double-check that mosque and, and just take a, a look uh, just to confirm that, but I'm 99% sure it's not through, which means those scholars are going to have less health on them, which means that in the event a knight comes through, looks for a nice little cheap shot, it's not going to be the case. And we can see right there, yeah, Piety was started to be researched, but immediately cancelled. So it, it means that there's going to be this window where the scholars have got a smaller amount of health than what they should and subsequently 
can be punished significantly because of that with those knights. And look at the villager trying to drop off the gold. This is what the scouts do so damn annoyingly. The, the villager was trying to drop off gold and, and you could see it's just, it's beating. The, the scouts are beating on it and it can't drop the gold off. You need to force drop it. It's very frustrating to deal with. And that's a great point that you brought up because think about how players use Sanctity. The moment you have Sanctity in, you start moving out with your Scholars. In fact, you start doing that even before Sanctity finishes. You want to be standing on those Sacred Sites the moment Sanctity finishes. You do that without Piety, it leaves your Scholars a lot more exposed to those Knights, picking them off. And there is Viper's potential attempt at a second Town Center. We'll have to see if it's actually a real second TC though, because it's possible that he's just mining stone because he wants Towers and Emplacements. But I wouldn't necessarily be against the two towns that are built here for Viper, especially if he can maintain pressure with those knights. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense in this matchup to go for the second town center. The problem is if you don't go for the second town center, then it's just a matter of time until that uh, th that economy for the Delhi is going to overtake. Because even if they just get one sacred site, then that's going to give them a nice little gold income. They're going to be able to get up to Castle Age before you. And it's just going to start to really, uh, you know, snowball out of control. Uh, so it makes a lot of sense here for Viper to do that, but I suspect it's probably just going to be for Arrow Slits, at least initially. Three Sacred Sites out of the map. Delhi highly likely to be going for those Sacred Sites, but nice little walls in the back of the base here for Demuslim. He's uh, he's going to be feeling pretty happy with these walls. Yeah, it's a small investment, but it makes your life so much easier because obviously it limits Viper's chances to harass. And you see, Viper can't really do much with those Knights right now. So the Muslim, he can stay back at home nice and safe and uh, wait for his army to build up. You see right now he's going Spearman, but he's already adding Horsemen as well. So he's going to start working towards those Sacred Sites pretty soon. And Viper taking a somewhat unfavorable engagement over here. If he can pull back those Knights and heal them back up, this is still fine though, because obviously those Spearmen do take damage. And unless you pull a Scholar, they won't be healed automatically. Yeah, it was beautiful control from him. He, he came in with the charge, saw that the spearman... Oh, we got a we had a little bit of a skewer right there. Viper making a bit of a, an uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic rather, mistake. Uh, but uh, he's, he's almost a little bit overextended. And we can see he's going to be losing two units as a result of pushing in here. Uh, so, yeah, beautiful control at the first instance. On the second one, though, not so much. Now we might see the consequence of going for that second town center for the Viper, which he has dropped down on his back hunt uh, behind his main town center. But this is the... This the consequence of going for this early second town center and not delaying it so you see players like marine lord look to delay it until about nine minutes is when they go for it but viper going very early here and as a result it means the muslim is going to be able to push out we go take a look at his mosque i'm sure sanctity is probably about 20 seconds away from completion right now yeah it's probably going to be the case and this is scary for viper because you see he's just now finishing that second town center he's yet to get any major impact from it in his game but the Muslim already securing the sacred sites and with the army he has, he should be able to control at least two of them, especially because the bottom two are rather close to each other. So you can control both of those without Viper being able to decap. And after that, if you start leveraging that gold income, suddenly you could think about attacking that expansion town center from Viper because the players are now spreading out a lot more with their extra town centers, but that also leaves them quite exposed. That second town center is way less health than the starting TC. So it is very possible for the Muslim to build up his forces, leveraging that gold and berry food that he's getting, and then just ram rush that town center down. So this is a little concerning for Viper, I feel. Yeah, it definitely feels like Viper's on the back foot right now because those three sacred sites are all going to be coming in. We see the second one now being captured as well up towards the north. Is, is that third one being captured? I can't even see if there's a, a scholar on the sacred site just yet, uh, but uh, two out of three so. ain't bad. Yeah, no third one up there just yet. Uh, something we do normally see is players will just send a, a naked scholar up there with no military support, but not going to be the case today. M Viper, his military looking quite small at the moment. Only three knights, only six archers. What I would love to see from the Muslim here is walling in at least one of those sacred sites, because as you said, only three knights for Vipers, so breaking through those walls would be impossible. And look at that, a completely different strategy here for the Muslim. He's not walling in the sacred site itself. He's going to wall off that entire segment of the map it's a pretty big investment, but should this game go very long, this could be very painful for Viper because obviously Viper just lost like 70% of the left side of the map. Once again, Viper pushing out with his knights together with his archers. And this is something you gotta be so careful of playing as the French because if you if you do not have the sufficient amount of units to defend against the horsemen, then your archers are gonna get eaten alive for breakfast by those horsemen. We can see the knights now moving out. They're gonna have to head back in the other direction as the spearmen begin to come out. Archer's gonna be looking to tee off towards them, but there's not enough archers out here. Viper already looking like he might be just here with minimal units and he's got a scout behind as well that's gonna get eaten alive by those horsemen. Things aren't looking the best for Viper. 
Yeah, it's not looking great for him. I mean, he's building up his numbers, but it is right now 16 army versus 32. It's double the army for the Muslim, and he's maintaining control over two sacred sites. Viper is even going to lose that scout in that battle. And as you said, it's going to be difficult to pull back those archers now. Yeah, the archer's just going to get eaten alive right there. The horseman on top of them getting some great trades in. This is terrible for Viper early on in this set. It's imperative uh, that the first game comes out in a victory for either player. I really, really want to win this here because it's going to set the tone for the rest of the series. And now Viper continues to fall back towards his base. Knight's trying to screen up against those horsemen. He manages to salvage just a handful of archers, but I don't know whether it's going to be enough to hold on this position because behind this, the Muslim's got the gold income of a god right now. He's sitting on 500 gold in his bank and he's thinking about going to that castle edge. Yeah, he could also think about maintaining this level of pressure here because Viper is struggling to add reinforcements to this one. And you see, now those units are so close to those archer ranges that they could just start intercepting the new archers that pop out. Looks like the Muslim is going to play this one safe, but he has been controlling those sacred sites for quite a long time now. And you see, the result of that is starting to show. He already has a resource bank of 500 gold. And with the food bank that he's massing, indeed, it's a possibility for him to go to cost, and now he's sending out that naked scholar, as you pointed out before, to get that third sacred site. Viper is in trouble here. He's got a reasonable villager lead of 12, but his army is not spectacular, and he's up against soon-to-be three um, sacred sites for the Delhi player. This is something that I like to do a fair bit against Delhi. It's a little, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit weird. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, don't try this at home. Uh, so what Viper can quite literally do is just chill out. Uh, if he goes castle himself, looks to get a keep down, he can try and extend the game a little bit more. He's going to be on a timer though with those sacred sites. That's going to be the issue. Uh, and so his economy is scaling. That's the one thing important to remember is that his economy is scaling and a nice little raid coming in over for Viper at the moment. The Muslim playing it a little bit greedily and not actually bringing back any or having any outposts back here. I'm curious whether we've got that textile upgrade. It's possible that he has gotten that, but as you pointed out, that was a quite greedy and ambitious play over here, especially against the French. I guess he felt that he's, he's the tempo setter with his aggression and Viper is not going to send a counterattack, but this could be devastating over here. A couple of hunters went down and now the berry villagers are exposed. The Muslim is losing way more villagers than he should, but look at that. Are the knights trapped or are they slaying villagers in this process? They're huh? slaying villagers uh, and... Uh... Oh, I've got a little bit of a freeze right there. Apologies, guys. Uh, we, we've got some technical difficulties. Uh, it, it, it wouldn't be a final if we didn't have technical difficulties. Don't <laughs> worry, we're back, we're back. We're back. Um, but, but yeah, th this is one of the difficulties when dealing with French in the Second Age. Uh, and this is part of the reason why you have to, have to, have to have outposts on those uh, on those berry patches, on those deer patches, because you can chase after the knights and you can go and contest the knights. But the problem is there's so much damage coming through from those knights. They are going to kill villagers. You are going to lose lives out there unless you've got them safe inside outposts. And now Viper going up. Don't tell me. Don't tell me what that was. Uh, that looked to me an awful lot like a Royal Institute back there. Uh, I'm pretty uh, sure uh, that was a... I would support it. I think that... Yeah, I there is a Royal, Royal Institute. Institute. And that, that's the great idea for Viper, because he understands that the Delhi doesn't want to play a long game. Delhi don't want to play a 50-minute long game. The Delhi wants to play that castle age timing, go that semi-fast castle approach, pick up the relics, and then unleash hell with elephants or your lancers with the own blades upgrade. So what is Viper's response? He's going to get the Royal Institute, giving him that massive buff to his Arbaletchie, his lancers or knights. And with that, if he can hold off the Delhi and just make this game much longer, suddenly Viper's gonna be in a great spot. And if you look at the villager count now, it's way better for Viper, 67 against 41. Sure thing, the Muslim still has those sacred sites, but if you consider the fact that the Muslim lost quite a few villagers here and Viper is now building up a respectable villager lead, suddenly you get the feel that Viper is slowly taking control over this game. And take a look towards the north. I'm, I suspect that, that sacred site has been decapped. I'm not sure exactly when that happened. It might have been in the midst of those raids coming through, but that north sacred site is not held by the Muslim at this point in time. Now, obviously, he's picking up all the relics. We can see he's got four on the way towards his mosque at the moment. Still a fifth relic sitting out inside the base of Viper. Uh, but uh, remember that that is all going to be offsetting the village account here. But the question is whether it's going to be enough because those knights now coming in, going to be looking to take out the very first of the scholars. Scholar going to be trying its best to run through. He's still yet to get that speed upgrade and unfortunately losing its life. Yeah, it's a great point that you brought up. Four relics plus two sacred sites for the Delhi is nothing to be ashamed of, and it can easily offset the villager deficit that you have. There's a second component, though, and that's going to be food control, and that applies to both players. So the Muslim still has to be the aggressor to make sure that he can secure those extra berry patches. 
delay his transition to farms. And for Viper, he needs to ensure that he can take those hunts, he can take his own berries, because if he needs to start transition to farms, it's gonna be concerning and problematic, because obviously, the Muslim is working towards a timing push over here, so you don't want to be in the middle of that farm transition if you're Viper when the Muslim launches that assault. Yeah, yeah, it's 100% right. So it's a smart move for him to get them out sooner rather than later, but his economy is looking very good behind this. And so now it just comes a matter of time uh, for Viper, and ideally he just wants to survive at this point. You can see he's got 26 archers and only six knights out at this point. So I don't know whether he's really leaning towards Abla Trier, whether he's leaning towards those royal knights, but now coming out with a fair few archers, these guys have got their veterancy status. So they're going to be able to repel these horsemen. They're going to be forced back once again. Uh, but Viper looking very good, especially the fact that he's not on a timer really helps him out a huge amount. Uh, but now we see our first elephant coming out. Viper was going for a decap in the center. Going to be denied here by Demuslim as he gets units onto the site and the elephant marches out into the middle of the map to take out that knight. Yeah, the Muslim is able to maintain control over that one sacred site. The bottom one was also decapped, so Viper was very active with his knights and just trying to use the distraction that he caused with those raids to decap those sacred sites. So it's only one right now under the control of the Muslim. What I love about the Muslim's play here is that he's limiting the playing field by a massive margin. If you take a look at all those voles, He's making sure the Viper can't launch counterattacks with those knights. His army is likely going to be relatively slow moving because the backbone of that army will be the elephants. Obviously, he's going to have some lancers, he's going to have some horsemen in this army, but he doesn't want an open playing field. He wants one straight line of march towards Viper's base, and Viper has enlistment incentives in his global queue. That implies that he has a defensive castle somewhere, and that's going to make life much more difficult for the Muslim here. Yeah, well, hopefully it's up shortly because there's a big army coming right towards him and I don't see a keep anywhere. There's the keep up towards the north, but I can't help but feel like it might have been better suited in his wood line because right now he is in trouble. A lot of units in the base now for Viper. There's 71 population for the Muslim compared only to 36 for the Viper. He's going to try his best to hold on here. You can see him squeezing in between these houses as the archers in the backside try their best just to get into a decent position where they're not going to die, but Viper might be on the ropes right now as the Muslim continues to funnel in resources. He's got knights, he's got scholars, he's got elephants, he's got spearmen and horsemen just trampling through the base now of the Viper. And the horseman is the key element of this one because Viper's army is exclusively archers. He only has two knights, one horseman, two arbaletriae. So just a massive force of horsemen supported by some elephants is enough to devastate Viper's eco. And look at that, Viper's farmers have to flee to the right side. Viper's food eco is going to collapse over here. If the Muslim can maintain this pressure a little longer, I think he has the chance to knock out Viper from this game. I got to agree with you. It's not looking good for Viper right now. He's only got two knights in queue and he's going to need a lot more than that to take out the forces that the Muslim has got. And we can see them actually being picked up right there. Men at arms getting added into the mix as well. You can see Viper going to be trying his best to tee off towards those scholars, managing to take them out. I'm not sure whether they've got their piety through just yet, but I'd suspect that they do. And now Viper going to be trying his best just to continue kiting away towards those farms on the north side. We can see as he continues running back, he's not running any screens at the moment. It's difficult for him. And now all three sacred sites have been taken by the Muslim. So at the same time, we've got a win condition for the Muslim that has happened. Knight going to be coming out looking to dish out some damage as well onto that elephant. Viper is trying his best, just constantly kiting for these units over on the right hand side. He seems to be slowly whittling down these troops as well. Still yet to see any Arbolatria out. Actually, no, we've got two Arbolatria that are going to be joining the mix right now. And Viper, it seems like he might actually be able to hold this. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure why the Muslim is attacking that starting town center with just one elephant over here. But as you said, his forces are being ground down. That being said, we haven't seen a lot of reinforcements coming from the Muslim yet. And he's just now starting to trickle in those Lancers. And Viper only down to two Arbaletriae. He doesn't have a response to those Lancers that now have owned blades as well. And those archers once again getting forced back. Viper, he still lost most of his farming eco, but he finally cleans that elephant up, which could be a sign of recovery. Still, if the Muslim can maintain pressure, he could still be fine. And the Muslim has enough stone for a castle. I think this is the moment where you pull the trigger on a very aggressive castle right next to Viper's town center. How does Viper hold that? I don't know how he held that. I'm not sure exactly what it was, but it seems like he's actually going to hold right here. We can see that there's only a few remaining units now in the base of the Viper, and he somehow manages to keep his head above water. As you mentioned, there's 800 stone, or it was 800 stone in the bank there for the Muslim, so we could potentially see a keep in the base of Viper. Uh, but still, we see that his knight's just running around. He's managed to pick off all of the spears, and now it's just going to be armored units that remain for him. He's also got a, he's got a monk in queue, so definitely got his priorities mixed at the moment. Uh, religion <laughs> is definitely one of them, but all of his army going to get cleaned up here. 18 bills idle in the town center. It, it looks like he's holding, but I don't know. I really can't I tell know. at this point. 
I mean, Viper is down to four army and he's got 300 food per second. He held on for so long because he had a decent resource bank and he did have some backup forces over here. He's now dropping a castle right next to that expansion town center, trying to keep his base alive. But I mean, all three of his landmarks are on the same screen. If the Muslim just starts taking down these three landmarks, he's gonna win this game. Viper needs an army to push this away. Third sacred site now getting captured up towards the north. Viper up to a hundred villagers. So despite this absolute onslaught of attack, uh, Viper still creates villagers in, in the midst of everything. But the, the real issue that he's going to have is just the lack of army. And you mentioned all three of those landmarks are on the same piece of land. And that's going to be difficult for Viper. We talked about the fact that, you know, there was a keep up towards the north that he'd put down and now a keep down towards the south. And we see a second town center coming up for the Muslim as well. So looking to, uh, to keep up with the Kardashians. But uh, yeah, things aren't looking the best for Viper at this point. Not at all. He had a massive villager lead, but for the last two or three minutes, he had 40 idle villagers. So the effective working villager count was pretty much the same between the two players. Viper finally cleaning this one up though. And it looks like now we're gonna have that castle drop come in. So just when Viper would feel that, hey, I'm fine, I'm holding this. Maybe it's not over yet. In fact, the show is about to begin because now the Muslim has all those costage upgrades for his economy, for the blacksmith. Own Blades has finished and he still has two sacred sites with a chance to grab the third one to even start that timer. Yeah, so this is the question for me is how does Viper play this? Because his base is under siege and I suspect the Muslim probably going to be looking to get some siege out himself. Um, I, I, look, you know, honestly, he doesn't even really need it at this point. He's going to be able to siege down these landmarks without too much problem. Uh, and then Viper, you know, the, the burden is upon him. He is the one that needs to force, or he's the one that needs to respond to that. He's going to be the one that needs to clear the key. He's going to be the one that needs to clear out those military units. And the elephant is going to be doing more than enough siege here uh, as, as it continues to wail down on the villages below the town center. This is a tough position for Viper. I don't think he's going to be able to hold this. And I tell you what, if he does, he is just on a next level. Yeah, like this would be an insane hold for Viper because so much of his farming eco is exposed. His landmarks are all exposed. Um, and we also have some lag spice coming in here, apparently, again. But the bigger concern for Viper is that, as I said, his F's landmarks... In the chat. Oh, F's. F's in the chat. Big F's. Ah, uh, guys, you hate to see it. You hate to see it. Look, it is, unfortunately, the Italian internet. Mamma mia, papa pia, baby got the diarrhea. And indeed, it seems like oh. the diarrhea was had today. So hopefully we have oh. something for you guys Look shortly. At that. Look at that. Back what? we are. Oh, we're back. Are we back? Are we back? We're back. Oh, we're back. Let's if, go. If we are back, say F in the chat. If we are back, say F in the chat. Wait. Uh, we are semi back. I mean, we, we can take a look at this. Anyways, Viper's starting TC is burning. And the other concern that he has is that the houses are right next to it. So the Muslim could just allocate a couple of units to burn down those houses nonstop, make it difficult for Viper to even add any military population. Yeah, we... we yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just being distracted by the frame count right now. It's a bit of a slideshow. Uh, can we please go to, to slide 13? Thank you, Vodka. Um, <laughs> but now, yeah, look at that town center. That town center going to be going down. Uh, Viper going to be trying his best to hold on here. Village is going to be jumping out. Going to be able to repair the town center. Uh, what, what? I'm curious what monument Viper is using right now. It kind of looks like the elephant one. Hard to tell, though. Uh, it would be such an irony if he was using the elephant monument on his town center and he just lost his town center to the elephant and... Uh, that, that, that's a new one. That's not the actual tower elephant or war elephant one. There, there's a different elephant one because Salami uses that and all respective deli mains use that. This feels like a baby elephant. Yeah, and now going to be... This is such a hard spot for him right here because the, the knights are running in underneath the town center. But we can see that the keep's actually going to be going down. Viper trying to hold on. He's on 106 villages. But meanwhile, the Muslim has closed the gap. He's up to 79 villages, adding on that second town center. Uh, also important to remember that the knight or the uh, the relics and the sacred sites are throwing gold towards the Muslim's way. Uh, he has got. Have a look how many scholars he's got, Ludicor. He's got 20 scholars. He's playing Imperial Delhi. This is how you play Imperial Delhi. Just when you thought French could have beaten the, the Delhi Sultan in Imperial, we see the Muslim that might actually be playing towards an Imperial age here, potentially. Yeah, it looks like some of those scholars are being used for combat duty over here. You can see a couple of them on the screen as well. But I like what the Muslim is doing. He's maintaining pressure on Viper's base, not because he wants to vibe him out. He doesn't want to destroy those landmarks because he's understanding that Viper might still have the potential to hold. But it's the concept of offense being the best defense. You are maintaining pressure in Viper's base to make sure that he doesn't have the energy or the units that he can commit towards those sacred sites. And I would love to see the Muslim starting to stonewall in those sacred sites. 
because I think at this point he could consider playing for a timer, which is currently standing at seven and a half minutes. All right. Well, uh, I, I think from here, this is, you know, Viper somehow managed to hold. He's somehow managed to hold. He's still got the smaller army, but he's got the larger economic advantage at this point. But I feel like significant damage has been done to the Viper here. Uh, Demuslim is definitely in a very good spot for Delhi at this point. He's up to 25 scholars as well. This guy's a madman. Look at him just producing scholars overtime right now. I like it because the thing is that he has population space for those scholars. It's not going to hurt, right? But if you're using your scholars as a combat unit, you're going to lose some of them. And they train very, very slowly on your Dome of Fate. So you might as well mass a lot of them so you don't really have concerns if you lose some. Now Viper is popping one of the most important upgrades on that Royal Institute. It is the Royal Bloodlines coming in. And if there is a single upgrade that could save Viper here, I think that is the one. Yeah, Royal Bloodlines is going to be a big help here. It's going to help out those horsemen as well as the knights that he's got. We can see he's got nine and nine of each. Uh, but now those trebuchets are going to be working down the main town center. We can see the scholars moving out on the map, just sprinting around. Uh, now, I do apologize to you guys if my uh, calling is a little bit delayed. I'm actually running off the main stream at the moment, not running off uh, my own stream on the on the back end. I'm, I'm a little bit uh, ahead on the on the back end stream, so it's just, it would be out of sync by about 20 seconds uh, if, if I didn't. So apologies uh, in advance, because I suspect uh, that, uh, that there will be a big battle that unfolds, and I'll be a little bit delayed. But um, coming, coming from this position, though, is there any way that Viper actually manages to hold this? Well, right now he's sending out his cavalry to decap those sacred sites, but the concern here is that he's splitting his forces. You see, his cavalry is trying to launch a counterattack, but that leaves only the archers and the arbalatriate to hold at the back line. And right now, those elephants are starting to just steamroll this base. The town center is gone, and that's by far the hardest landmark to destroy. And I think the Muslim has some trebuchets on the field that will start shelling that school of cavalry. Viper also lost some precious production buildings on the front. He could lose some houses here. This is getting overly concerning for Viper. His military population isn't looking bad, but if you look at the positioning of those units, that's a lot more concerning. Yeah, I, one of the things that, that is very, very uh, scary for me when I'm watching Viper games is that sometimes he doesn't realize that his landmarks are dying. I've killed him like that before. Uh, he has died like that before many a time, even in tournament games. Uh, so he's got to be careful, but look at the scholars. Look at the scholars right now. There are so many scholars out here. Unfortunately, I don't think scholars can heal trebuchets. So uh, they're going to have to they're gonna have to work out, out a little bit differently. Viper did manage to decap that one sacred site, so we're going to be setting ourselves up for a very long game over here. And oh, as you pointed out, many scholars, that's a sign towards a Delhi playing an Imperial. And look at those resources being piled up here for the Muslim. And should he get to Imperial, well, suddenly he is once again going to get a big power spike over Viper. Yeah, now Viper doing a great job. The, the fact that he decaps that south, southern sacred site is literally game changing for him. It means that there's an extra 10 minutes that he's bought himself because they, he was on a massive timer, quite literally a huge timer. Um, but now he's able to continue pushing out. He's got the trebuchets behind this as well. So two trebuchets going to be able to take down this keep. And slowly but steadily, he manages to find his feet. Yeah, part of that, of course, is the Muslim using a lot of men at arms in his army, and Viper is now building up a respectable amount of Arbaletria here. So suddenly, the unit composition for the Muslim is underwhelming at best over here. He only has one elephant on the battlefield right now, make it two now. But those men at arms, they will be non factors against those knights now with royal bloodlines and the Arbaletria. And as you said, Viper is gaining more and more confidence, and he still has a respectable villager count with a full farm transition. Though he's cornered, so one has to wonder how much gold he has left in his base. And remember, he doesn't have the guild hole to pull some gold from it. Yeah, so he's going to ha have to start thinking outside the walls. He's looking to move forward now, though. Knight's going to get picked up here. He's going to be careful not to not to run too far past. Uh, but uh, also a little bit of a raid back in the base against his opponent. He's up by about 13 villagers at the moment. That's definitely going to be um, mitigated by the fact that there are relics as well as sacred sites held by the Muslim. Yeah, the Muslim is adding a second layer of walls. You can see that um, on the left side of the screen. So he's understanding the Viper is intensifying those raids. And I really feel like the Muslim needs a second layer of walls. Something that's complete, not something that has gaps in the middle where units can pass. And there it is, stone walls now coming in. Because you really don't want to let those knights start running circles around your base. That is how the death begins against the French. You let those knights start raiding you. And then you're suddenly turning from an aggressor into a defender. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, it, it, it can be very difficult to, to deal with all of those raids coming in. You know, you're trying to fight on the on the main front, and this is something Beastie Cutie does a lot quite well, fighting on the main front. 
and then at the same time uh, pushing in at the back. A bit of a battle beginning to unfold right now as the Knights are going to try and take down that, that elephant. You can see the Scholars working overtime. Unfortunately, they're going to have to be paid a little bit more as that elephant does eventually go down. The Viper just continuing to push forward. De Muslim now, he's on the back foot. All of a sudden, it's looking like, where are the forces for De Muslim? He's got so much military invested in his Scholars. Is, is that his only military right now? Kind of feels like it. If you look at the count, he's got 17 crossbows out there, but crossbows don't beat archers or arbletrier. And the key word right now for Viper is price. He's using that castle to decrease the production price of those units on the archer range as well. And he also has enlistment incentives. So there is a massive discount on those archers and arbletrier being produced. Sure enough, the Muslim does have the sacred sites. He has uh, the relics working for him. He even has the production speed. But Viper is getting those units out at an insanely low pro cost. Now the units for the Muslim looking to move in. We can see the archer's going to be trying to hold on and the horsemen continue moving forward. The, the scholars got to be careful. They'd like to tank it up on the front line. These guys are pretty cheap, so it makes sense to get them up there. They've got a lot of health on them as well. Uh, but the men at arms going to be looking to crush through. You can see the elephant unfortunately going to be losing its life. Scholars aren't doing a whole lot of healing here. And uh, and going down, the elephant does. And Viper looking to hold on. It, it's starting to look a little bit scary now for the Muslim because Viper's population is looking healthy. The keep does go down behind the scenes. Uh, but unfortunately, Viper going to be able to hold on here, and Demuslim definitely not going to be in a decent position after this, because once that keep goes down, we can see the villagers down there repairing it, but I suspect this final volley might be the one to put the nail in the coffin, and then the whole world is going to be opening up again for the Viper. The whole world is opening up indeed. He did lose his castle, but I think he's just going to replace that immediately. And behind this one, the Muslim lost all three of the sacred sites, which means that suddenly his gold income cut out, it disappeared. You are counting on those sacred sites to consistently trickle in gold for you, and when they're gone, suddenly you find yourself lacking gold, as the Muslim is right now. You see, he only has 300 gold in the bank, with 1300 food consistently being floated, and he's struggling with unit composition. His army is 14 archers, 10 men at arms, and that's not something that's going to beat Viper's forces right now. And am I seeing an Imperial Age from Viper? That's exactly the case. The Rat Palace is coming wow. in. I wonder what the exact spot is. It's gonna be right next to that sacred site. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I, I can't believe it. I can't believe that we are seeing this Viper just going absolutely ham. He's doing such a great job with this uh, and, and somehow finding a way back into this game. He, he's an absolute madman. And the fact he's able to hit Imperial before the Muslim, despite having, you know, he had a villager lead, but he definitely had an ec economy deficit. And somehow he's managed to stabilize. The Arbola Trier just coming in clutch and Viper falling back now. But uh, I mean, he's looking very good, isn't he? He's looking really good. Now that French eco efficiency is kicking in, and the thing is that the Muslim, he had a massive power spike, but this is where the Delhi starts to fall off a cliff here, this late castle age, when the opponent also has all the upgrades that you have, so you can no longer use your uh, free upgrades. And what's more important is that, as we discussed, Viper's got very cheap units in here. Viper now reaching Imperial. If he can maintain gold control, so he can maintain production of knights, he's in a great spot. And the Muslim, he's struggling for gold. And that is a concern because that's going to potentially prevent him from going into Imperial. Yeah, we see that Red Palace up towards the north on the sacred side. They're going to be denying out the keep from his opponent, the Muslim. And, uh, and now Viper looking very, very strong as he continues to push forward here. We see the elite upgrades coming through. It looks like elite horsemen together with elite knights. So going to be focusing on the cavalry. Keep in mind, he's already got his royal bloodlines because of the Royal Institute. A lot of royals in there, I appreciate, but I assure you, they're all, all royalty. And that is a big power spike indeed, because um, if you went for the guild hall, you would still need to make a university, grab royal bloodlines at a higher price, and wait until that research finishes, and it's a quite lengthy research. So by researching that technology in Feudal Age using the Royal Institute, not only do you save on the price, you get it in Castle Age, what's more important is that now that you have gotten to Imperial, you have that upgrade immediately. So the moment the elite upgrade finishes, you're all set with fully upgraded Imperial Age Knights for Viper, and you can see that he's starting to send wave after wave of cavalry to start harassing the Muslim's base, because now he he can break through those polysides very easily. Yeah, now we see more upgrades coming through. Elite Arbolatria are going to be coming through for the Viper. And this is where it starts to get scary. You know, people often talk about French not having much of a late game. Delhi probably quite equally. But I tell you what, those Arbolatria, do not mess with them once they get their elite upgrades, once they get their Gambisons, once they get their crossbow stirrups. There they are coming in right now. He is getting all the upgrades for them. And the crazy thing here is that Viper was playing that entire castle age without crossbow stirrups. He could have gotten that upgrading castle, which would have made his army even more devastating. So he was holding out 
against all those assaults, actually lacking one of the most important arbalatry upgrades. So now that he's gonna have it in, it's going to be an even more devastating army. And the Muslim, he looks like he's in trouble. Yeah, Vata going to be moving in here, trying to deny this keep from coming up. We can see the villagers on the bottom side there, trying to tap away at the at the foot of, of the of the keep. But unfortunately for Viper, it looks like the keep is going to be getting up. A lot of units continuing to funnel out for Demusim. He's going to be trying to push Viper back here. Viper going to have to fall back as that keep is indeed completed. And uh, Trebuchet is going to be called for some backup here. But Viper doing a great job of just continuing to kite. We can see those Arbalatria just dishing out so much damage as well. Still yet to get their crossbow strips in, but uh, it's about to come in. I can feel it. Probably another 20 seconds on that bad boy. Yeah, and once it comes in, suddenly those Arbalatria become a very good all-purpose unit out here. And now you got the cannon power spike as well for Viper, so you can start taking on the castle really fast. And the Muslim needs that castle. That is one of the big gold mines on the map. The other one is down to the south. So the Muslim needs to maintain control over that. He can't afford to forfeit that to Viper. The Muslim, though, on the way to Imperial. So there is maybe a slight chance for him to recover. Yeah, he's got a lot of scholars in the bank. So once he gets a Madrasa out, he's going to be A-OK. -okay. Put some all inside that. It falls back for a couple minutes. He'll be fine. But Viper actually pushing in right now. We can see the Manganel on the back line. Actually dishing out some decent damage right there. Look at that. Don't ignore the Manganel. You cannot ignore that Manganel. Don't treat it like it doesn't exist. Because I tell you what, he's going to come back. And he's going to be an absolute chat. He's going to glow up. And he's going to take down everybody with him. He, is, he does incredible damage. But Viper, fortunately, going to be able to push through on this position. Second Manganel now coming out. And Viper looking to try and push over the Muslim. And now the problem for the Muslim is that he might not have the time to recover over here because Viper senses the blood in the water. He's understanding that the Muslim at this point, if he doesn't get to Imperial, it's game over for him. And right now Viper has the momentum over here. He's going to start marching forward. He's pulling villagers, likely to secure some map control with a new castle over here. And all these villagers for the Muslim working on that gold mine will be gone. The Muslim's access to gold will be completely denied once those sacred sites are decapped. Yeah, and this could be really bad right now for Demuslim because the primary thing to remember is that these this is his only gold source right now. If he loses this, he's going to have absolutely no gold. And with that, it's going to put him in a terrible position. He's trying his best to hold on. It, you can see the villagers just there, but a good game gets called. Demuslim taps out, Viper victorious, and takes the first game in the set with some sort of absolute god tier hold. I'm speechless. I'm genuinely speechless. I, I have no idea how he managed to do it. No idea how he managed to pull that out. Incredible stuff coming out from him. Uh, what an absolute game. We take a look there at the unit count, uh, and you can see that it was basically neck and neck the entire way uh, until the very, very end. All right. Well, uh, we will be moving into our next game, our second game, shortly. Uh, we can take a look here. Where I'll, I'll try and run you guys through the screen. We're just working everything behind it on the back end, uh, at, trying to trying to work out, you know, exactly what's happening. Look at the village account and see that's the power of the second town center. It was so close to Viper actually, you know, being tapped out there. It was very very close to Viper losing that game because of the the fact that he went for that early second town center. There were multiple times there where Viper, you know, any lesser player would have thrown in the towel, but Viper held on and somehow manages to fight his way back. Yeah, he, he was down to four military pop.